정보통신기술과 다양한 산업이 융합해 새로운 시너지를 창출하는 4차 산업혁명 시대. 고령화 추세에 맞춰서 빠른 성장이 예상되고 있는 바이오 헬스케어 산업에도 융합이 활발하게 이루어지고 있는데요. 의료의 패러다임도 치료와 진단 중심에서 질병을 예측하는 맞춤 의료로 변화하고 있습니다. 오늘도 리더는 헬스케어 산업과 IT의 만남을 통해서 보건 의료 사업 분야의 혁신을 이끌고 있는 한 미국 기업을 소개할 겁니다. 미국 의료정보기업 아테나 헬스인데요. 아테나 헬스 공동 창립자인 에드박과 함께 헬스케어 산업과 IT 결합을 통한 의료 산업의 지형 변화는 어떤지 말씀 나눠보겠습니다. 마이 <웃음> So the idea behind Athena Health is very simple. Mm -hmm. We want to be the Amazon.com of healthcare. Just as Amazon leveraged the power of the internet to completely change the way that we think about retail, we want to leverage the power of the internet to completely change the way that folks think about healthcare. And so we founded the company uh, 15 years ago. We've been growing 30% a year, uh, every year for the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, last year we passed a billion dollars in revenue. We went oh. public in 2007, mm -hmm. so it's going very, very well. Mm -hmm. So you are the co-founder of the Athena Harris and mm -hmm. you worked as uh, the uh, executive vice president or C COO yes. uh, so of the Athena Harris. So uh, you now serve on the board of the two public companies, uh, Athena Harris and Castlelight Harris. Yeah. So yeah. please briefly introduce yourself to our viewers. So after I graduated from Harvard uh, in 1997 in computer science, I ended up joining Athena Health along with my co-founders mm -hmm. Todd Park and Jonathan Bush. Mm -hmm. So we started the company. Mm -hmm. For the first dozen years or so, I was the chief technology officer, so I was responsible for writing most of the initial code. Mm -hmm. uh, I wrote probably half a million lines of code that's mm -hmm. still running today. Mm -hmm. uh, for the last six years, I've been the chief operating officer mm -hmm. Uh, running the company, and I recently stepped down. Today, I serve on the board of Athena Health and of Castlight, mm -hmm. and I advise numerous health IT startups. Mm -hmm. So, as I mentioned earlier, you spoke of uh, digital strategy of global health uh, companies in the Health and IT Forum mm -hmm. last month. What is the key point of your speech? The key point of this speech is that we already know what the future of healthcare is mm -hmm. going to look like mm -hmm. because we're experiencing it in every other area of our lives mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. In retail, in travel, in finance, uh, you look at Airbnb, you look at Google, you look at Apple, you look at Samsung, you know what the future of healthcare is going to look like mm -hmm. because we're experiencing it every day in other aspects mm -hmm. of our lives. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is learn the lessons from mm -hmm. what those companies have done in those industries mm -hmm. and apply them to healthcare. Mm -hmm. So, as you know, the first industrial revolution is now taking place very fast globally. Yeah. So, what would be the effect of this revolution to healthcare industry, and how will it will the medical industry will be changed? Well, in the future, uh, it'll change everything. Uh -huh. uh, so, the fourth industrial revolution mm -hmm. uh, is this idea that we are now in the middle of the fourth major change in mm -hmm. technology. Mm -hmm. The first industrial revolution was steam power in the late 1700s, mm -hmm. uh, which changed everything then. Mm -hmm. The second industrial revolution was characterized by the rise of electricity in yeah. the late 1800s. Mm -hmm. The third industrial revolution was the rise of computing mm -hmm. uh, in the late 1960s, early 1970s. Mm -hmm. But the fourth industrial revolution is characterized by ubiquitous computing everywhere that will change every aspect of our mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. uh, in the late 80s, the most powerful computer in the world was the Cray-2 supercomputer. Mm -hmm. uh, and it weighed 5.5 tons. Today, this watch that I wear mm -hmm. on my wrist mm -hmm. is twice as powerful as the Cray-2 supercomputer mm -hmm. and weighs 50,000 times less. Mm -hmm. And so that's just going to change the way that everything happens mm -hmm. uh, in every industry. Mm -hmm. In healthcare, what it means is that we're going to see wearables everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so wearables that 
take your pulse, uh, know your current heart rate. Mm -hmm. uh, and using that data that's gathered from all these sensors mm -hmm. everywhere, we're going to have a lot of data which we can then process to mm -hmm. change the way that we think about healthcare. Mm -hmm. So the, from the perspective of the first industrial revolution taking place in the medical industry, yes. uh, they say that Mm, no, the people are focused on the using, applying the artificial intelligence. Yes. So, for instance, the, they say that the AI can do better uh, when reading the X-ray images. Yes. Yeah. So, what is your idea on uh, how artificial intelligence can be used in the medical industry? So again, and this was the point of the speech, mm -hmm. you can see what's going to happen <coughs> in healthcare by looking mm -hmm. at other industries. Mm -hmm. It's already the case that the Tesla <coughs> can actually drive its cars driverless better than most drivers mm -hmm, can. Mm -hmm. uh, AlphaGo just became the Go champion of the world. Mm -hmm. The same thing is going to happen mm -hmm. to healthcare. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to see that there are a bunch of companies that are focused on reading x-rays and those machines will end up being better than most mm -hmm. humans at reading those x-rays and identifying uh, what those different patterns in the x-rays mm -hmm. are. But also remember, with the fourth industrial revolution, we're having all of these different devices that you wear. Mm -hmm. So imagine that you're at home uh, and you have some sort of wearable sensor mm -hmm. and it can use all of the data coming from all the different sensors uh, to detect whether or not you have a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And as soon as it detects that you have a heart attack, it can administer an electric shock or it can actually call uh, emergency and have someone to your home within mm -hmm. minutes. Mm -hmm. That's the sort of thing that will be enabled by the fourth industrial revolution mm -hmm with uh, the application of both uh, artificial intelligence and big data. Mm -hmm. So as you know, people are spending more money to health care because the, the people are the, getting, I mean, that the, as the population is aging faster, right? Yeah. So health care industry is considered the, the one of the promising, promising industry in the future. So what do you see about the future of the, the, the health care industry? The future of healthcare industry, it depends on your point of view, mm -hmm. uh, is very bright mm -hmm. if you're in business. Uh, and from a global economic standpoint, uh, we're spending more and more and more of our money on healthcare. Mm -hmm. Today, we spend 10% of the gross domestic product mm -hmm. of the world mm -hmm. on healthcare. We spend about $6.5 trillion a year on healthcare. Mm -hmm. And so, from one perspective, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it's a huge opportunity. Mm -hmm. It means that there are all sorts of ways that we can begin to apply technology uh, and process and businesses to make healthcare better, mm -hmm. to create better healthcare at a lower cost. Mm -hmm. So this is the word of the digitization of healthcare is frequently used. Yeah. So what's the exact meaning of digitization of healthcare? Well, the idea behind the digitization of healthcare mm -hmm. is that it used to be the way healthcare was performed is that you and I would sit face to face mm -hmm. and you're the doctor and I'm the patient. Mm -hmm. And then we have a conversation and then you tell me to do something and that was it. Mm -hmm. That was the way that healthcare mm -hmm. was principally mm -hmm. done. And it's still the way the vast majority of healthcare is delivered today. Mm -hmm. In the future, the idea of digitization of healthcare is that uh, you will actually take all of the data from different sensors uh, to create a data profile of a patient. Mm -hmm. You will actually know what the labs are, you'll know the biorhythms, you'll know the sensors, you'll mm -hmm. actually be able to codify all the data mm -hmm. that's actually coming out of a person. You'll be able to codify the genomic data mm -hmm. uh, that, are coming, that are coming out of people mm -hmm. and mix those in different ways so that mm -hmm. it's not simply a conversation between two people. Mm -hmm. It's a conversation that is heavily leveraged mm -hmm. by vast amounts of data that is then gone, uh, uh, put through computer processes to allow for much better decision making. Mm -hmm. So these days, everybody is talking about big data. Yes. So big data has become a key element of any industry. Yeah. So my question is that how much important is big data to healthcare industry, and how do healthcare companies use it? Uh, so big data is huge for healthcare. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem right now is that there's not enough of it. Mm -hmm. So 
we see certain areas of healthcare, like mm -hmm. radiology images. Mm -hmm. uh, so radiology images were digitized probably 10 years ago mm -hmm. with the advent of PAX machines. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of digital images that you can use to process and begin to apply machine learning algorithms in healthcare. Mm -hmm. But the rest of healthcare is not yet digital. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you need to begin having these sorts of wearable sensors. You need to be able to begin uh, having labs come in mm -hmm. uh, to a central place. You need to be able to, again, uh, taking all of these streams of data so that you can begin to mm -hmm. apply machine learning mm -hmm. techniques to healthcare. Mm -hmm. So at a high level, I think machine learning and big data are very, very important to healthcare. Right now, we're not in the step of applying big data. Mm -hmm. We're in the stage of trying to acquire the big data in mm -hmm. healthcare. Uh, and that's the first step. It's actually just making sure that you get the data to begin with. Mm -hmm. And my next uh, question is uh, uh, this. Uh, I would like to know how the healthcare companies are trying to adapt themselves to digitization. Uh, would you introduce some successful uh, stories of global healthcare companies? Well, I think it's interesting to look at some of the failures. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, in, failure first. <laughs> in, in, uh, large companies that have mm -hmm. gone into healthcare. Mm -hmm. So Google and Microsoft mm -hmm. both went into healthcare probably mm -hmm. five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. There was Google Health and Microsoft Health. Mm -hmm. And both of them ended up not doing very well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Google Health actually shut down. Microsoft Health has gone through many, many iterations. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest lesson that those companies learned mm -hmm. is that healthcare mm -hmm. is not a $6.5 trillion mm -hmm. global industry. Mm -hmm. Healthcare is thousands of small billion dollar industries and they're all different. Mm -hmm. Wellness and diabetes management mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the performance of medical practices mm -hmm. and the performance of hospitals, they're all a little bit mm -hmm. different. And so what you see right now is that many of the biggest companies have begun to be two things. Number one, they're mm -hmm. focusing a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And number two, they're being a little bit more patient mm -hmm. with their timelines. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're seeing folks like <coughs> Apple Health. Uh, they've launched Apple Health, but they're being very, very patient mm -hmm. about how they begin to gather the data mm -hmm. and what they end up doing with it. Um, Google Health, instead of focusing on everything to do with healthcare, is actually focusing more on the life sciences and genomics mm -hmm. and uh, cancer. And the reason for doing that is they can apply a lot of their uh, machine learning and big data mm -hmm. algorithms mm -hmm. to try to figure out what are the best cures for, for cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what I see right now is a much more thoughtful, much more focused, much more patient approach mm -hmm. that the big companies are uh, focused on in healthcare today. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, as you know, last month, Donald Trump was <laughs> in, <laughs> yes. inaugurated as the president yes. uh, of the United States. Uh, and in terms of the healthcare system, he said he would change Obamacare, the core policy of Obama's administration. Yes. So what do you see the future of U.S. healthcare policy, I mean the direction of the policy? Uh, well, uh, candidly, I think that there's a lot of talk that will be had, mm -hmm. but the underlying problem is that the U.S. healthcare system costs $3.2 trillion. Mm. Uh, about half of it is funded by the government today. Mm -hmm. And at current course and speed, by the year 2040, every tax dollar the federal government com takes in will go out to pay for Social Security, Medicare, mm -hmm. and Medicaid. Mm -hmm. And so there's this big financial problem that they have to face, and you can't wave a magic wand and make it all go away. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, what they're finding today as Congress and the President try to battle this out, uh, is they're beginning to find that health care is a really, really tricky problem. It's lots and lots and lots of small interlacing problems, mm -hmm. uh, and you can't fix or change one part without changing lots of pieces. So right now, they say they're going to try to repeal Obamacare, but I think that uh, as they replace it, it's, go it's going to take a very, very, very long time mm -hmm. to try to figure out what the right fix will end up being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, uh, uh, you mentioned earlier, you gave me some example how the, medic, the wearable devices is, is, can be used. Right? Yes. So we are sure various wearable devices will be released more. What is the current status of U.S. wearable devices industry and how will it be like in the future? So right now we're at the very, very early stages of the mm -hmm. wearable mm -hmm. device industry. Uh, right now the vast majority of people who use wearable devices are folks in what's called the quantified self-movement. Mm -hmm. The idea that I'm one of those uber geeks 
who wants to use all new technologies, and I want to know everything about myself. I want to know how much I eat. I know, want to know how much I weigh.、Mm-hmm. I want to know how much I sleep. I want to know my blood pressure.、Mm-hmm. But that's a very small fraction of the population that really wants to know all of those things about、mm-hmm. itself. Uh, what it proved is that where the de- devices are actually real and that they work,、mm. uh, but they haven't actually actually yet found mass market.、Mm. My perspective on what's going to happen next with wearable devices is that they will be applied to chronic disease.、Mm. So chronic disease,、mm-hmm. uh, like uh, COPD、um, or diabetes、mm-hmm. uh, or cardiovascular disease, accounts for over 75 percent of all of healthcare costs.、Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and if you can imagine. That you can have an at-home glucometer、mm-hmm. with diabetes that can continuously measure your blood sugar、mm-hmm. levels, and that you can automatically titrate the amount of medication that you take based on those readings.、Mm-hmm. Then you can actually keep a lot of people out of the hospital and safer at home.、Mm-hmm. So I think the next area of wearables will be focused on these chronic diseases.、Uh, that small percentage of the population. That has these diseases、uh, and which constitute the majority of the spend.、Mm-hmm. Once wearables actually hits that piece of the market,、uh, the piece of the market where we're spending the most money,、mm-hmm. then I think it's going to become a very, very big business.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I understand Atana Health is established、uh, to aim at reforming U.S. medical services because、uh, it is said that、uh, medical services are provided not enough. So、uh, for resolving this issue, I heard that you developed one management system of insurance payment.、Mm-hmm. So would you introduce the system exactly? So one of the problems in the U.S. healthcare system、mm-hmm. is that there are. Thousands of insurance companies,、mm-hmm. and each one has its own rules for what it takes to get a claim paid.、Mm-hmm. Certain authorizations that have to be、uh, put together, or certain codes that have to be on the claim form.、Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, there are over 40 million rules that you have to keep track of in order to keep a claim paid、mm-hmm. in the United States.、Mm-hmm. And so, one of the early innovations that Athena ca- came up with was the idea of a rules engine. That would actually keep track of all of these 40 million rules real time、mm-hmm. as they changed all the time.、Mm-hmm. Uh, so we put that in practice, and the result was that by predicting which claims would fail and fixing them on the front end, we were able to get our practices paid six、mm-hmm. percent more, 30 percent faster.、Mm-hmm. And so at the heart of it was this patented、uh, rules engine, which was a core、mm-hmm. innovation、mm-hmm. to part of our business. Yeah. So the next two question is about the kind of the information privacy. I mean that、uh, using a personal mental and health information is very sensitive because、yeah. uh, it has not only physical but、uh, but also the behavior and the mental information. Yes.、Yeah. Uh, therefore, the information security is is most important. So how do we handle this problem? So first of all, I think it's important to take information security. And privacy very, very, very seriously.、Mm-hmm. But I would also say that if you look at every other aspect of our lives,、uh, you can see what other industries have done. Again,、mm-hmm. I think we should learn from other industries.、Mm-hmm. We already put all of our banking information online.、Mm-hmm. We actually put our pictures of our friends and our dogs、mm-hmm. on the internet、mm-hmm. uh, with social media.、Uh, so a lot of our private information is already on the internet,、mm-hmm. and you can actually see what those companies have done to safeguard their data.、Mm-hmm. And use the same techniques to safeguard our data in healthcare.、Mm-hmm. I'll make one other point,、mm-hmm. which is I think that in healthcare,、mm-hmm. it's important to make sure that the data is、uh, safe, but you also want it to be available under certain conditions.、Mm-hmm. So, for example, one of the、uh, classic cases is let's say that you get hit by a car and are unconscious,、mm-hmm. uh, and you have to go to the emergency room. Well, you want the emergency doc to know. Whether or not you're allergic to a certain medication,、mm-hmm. uh, so you want that piece of your medical record to be available to、mm-hmm. the treating doc,、mm-hmm. and so I think that there's always going to be a balance between security and privacy,、mm-hmm. and what's、uh, in the best interest of the patient, patient safety.、Mm-hmm. So those are the balances. It's a learn from other industry and also balance what's the right,、mm-hmm. what's the right balance in healthcare.、Mm-hmm. But here in Korea, the public、uh, medical information、uh, owned by the government agency. 
uh, is not shared shared with the uh, private uh, I mean private insurance companies. Mm -hmm. How about the the, the U United States? Do, uh, do they share it in private companies or? There's not a lot of sharing of information. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the big movements over the last mm -hmm. three or four years has been this idea that different healthcare institutions mm -hmm. should begin to share data more widely. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason they do that is because it's become clear that the best way to innovate is to begin sharing information between different institutions. Mm -hmm. So they've begun doing it, but I think it's mm -hmm. fair to say that it's, it's early, it's early uh, yeah. in uh -huh. the U.S. as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if you seek cooperation with any Korean medical uh, institute or companies uh, in the healthcare area. Uh, would you introduce if you have any? Well, one of the reasons I'm here in Korea mm -hmm. is to try to make sure that we have a really good understanding of the Korean healthcare mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that healthcare is a global problem, 6.5. Uh, trillion dollar global industry mm -hmm. and so we always want to make sure that we understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. I think it's inevitable that uh, Athena will end up wanting to work mm -hmm. in other countries someday. Uh, with that said, today mm -hmm. we have about 10 percent of the U.S. population and about uh, 10 percent of the U.S. patients, mm -hmm. about 78,000 doctors and about uh, 38 million mm -hmm. patients. But it's a relatively small percentage of the U.S. market. Mm -hmm. And so as a company, we also need to maintain discipline and focus. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to first focus on making sure we understand our core business today and execute very well against it. But we'll also make sure that we have sensors out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the right time, we'll make the right partnership with the, with the, uh, the right company and enter new markets. Mm -hmm. So uh, my next question is that uh, what does Korea uh, need to do to develop a healthcare industry? And can you give us some, give us some information, uh, some, no, some, some advice? Well, I loved the conference mm -hmm. that you put together yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that one of the most important things mm -hmm. that Korea can do right now mm -hmm. is just begin to talk about digital health. Mm -hmm. um, in the U.S., I was surprised by how much innovation mm -hmm. was unleashed simply because mm -hmm. the president said digital health is an important uh, thing for the country. Mm -hmm. That unleashed last year four billion dollars of venture capital mm -hmm. into healthcare startups all over mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. Mm -hmm. I think Korea can actually do the same thing if you simply start talking in public forums about the mm -hmm. fact that digital health is important. We want to be a leader in digital health. Mm -hmm. I think it will begin to spur interest and innovation, mm -hmm. and entrepreneurs will begin to come to the fore and they'll begin thinking about new ways of doing things. Yeah, the time's almost up, so this is last question to you. Yeah. So, can you tell us a little bit about your future plan in terms of developing healthcare industry? Again. Uh, I think that Athena will continue to keep mm -hmm. a, an eye on global health. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll continue to make sure we understand what's going on all over the world in healthcare because, mm -hmm. uh, again, it is thousands of overlapping industries. Mm -hmm. One of the things I found about my trip to Korea that I was uh, most interesting mm -hmm. is that uh, there is more that was the same than was different. Mm -hmm. uh, the hospitals in Korea. Uh, are very much the same as hospitals in the U.S. A patient comes in, you have to register, you see the doctor, you get the lab, you get the medications, uh, you get the surgery. Mm -hmm. It's all very, very, very mm -hmm. similar. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of the building blocks are similar. Mm -hmm. I want to keep track of those building blocks. And when the time is right mm -hmm. with the right partner, we are very excited to expand globally.네, 지금까지 들으신 것처럼 ICT와 융합된 헬스케어 산업은 새로운 먹거리, 새로운 성장 산업으로 떠오르고 있습니다. 
우리나라가 이 분야에서 선두권으로 치고 나가서 새 성장 동력을 확보했으면 하는 바람입니다. 오늘 출연해서 좋은 말씀 해주신 에드박님 감사합니다. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me.